I want to talk a little bit more about something that I've mentioned a few times recently. I've talked before about how agents are able to assess the impact of individual interventions that they make with users. So uh, if, if you look at the graph that's on the screen right now, this is a single intervention. That red line is a message that was sent. And then um, before and after, you can see event data that has been aggregated um, that indicates any kind of activity on the app. Now, if you look at this in its raw form, it's kind of hard to really get a read on that. And the agent assessed that it had an 80% chance of this intervention impacting user behavior. You can kind of see that because there's a really long spike right after the intervention, um, but it's difficult to eyeball. It's easier to see when you smooth it out, which is how the agent tends to look at it. 80% of the area under these curves happens after the intervention, and that's why it gets an 80% chance of impact. Agents are able to take this information and aggregate it across interventions in order to create preference profiles. So if a whole bunch of interventions were sent on Monday, then the agent goes back and finds all those Monday assessments and aggregates the before and after information. And that aggregation is now the waiting for Mondays for that user. And the agent can then use that to make decisions about whether to send on a Monday by drawing from beta distribution. And if the value drawn is above a threshold, then it sends. So when you look at those distributions, they can vary widely depending on signal size. Right here, we have a probability of 0.68, but if we have a very low signal, like a signal of two, uh, that's a pretty wide distribution. Plus, even though the central tendency is 68, you could very plausibly draw a zero or something very close there too. Whereas as the signal goes up, the distribution becomes much, much narrower. In other words, the agent becomes much more confident that this had, that the impact is what it assessed it to be. The challenge here is that the probability is easy to calculate. It's just the ratio of area under the curve after the message to area under the curve before the message. But signal does not have that straightforward definition. All of these events that go into creating this before message and after message signal have been scaled according to how rare the event is and how much that event feeds into um, an end of funnel event like a conversion event. You can't count on the aggregation of that signal to simply fit what a standard beta distribution parameterization is going to expect. Therefore, we have to scale that signal in order to make it appropriate for a beta distribution pull. The way we do that is by incorporating prior beliefs. I don't think there is any other way around this. I don't think there is an empirical way of decide how much signal is the right amount of signal to expect from an individual intervention. The priors that we've incorporated are the smallest signal and any intervention can carry is what it ends up looking at. If you look at an intervention that is a 50% probability that essentially ends up at almost a uniform distribution. So anything less than a two and it ends up getting kind of weird, it spikes up at tail, the properties aren't what you would expect of this kind of behavior. And so we, we set a floor of two, and then we set a ceiling of 400. That 400 um, is arbitrary. All prior beliefs are arbitrary, ultimately, I think. The reason we picked 400 is you can see how it gets narrower as the signal grows. When signal reaches 400, actually, technically, I think it's like 392, but we round it up just to make it simple. The distance between the lower end of the distribution and the upper end of the distribution when you have a 50% chance of success is about uh, 10 percentage points. It's going to run from 0.45 to 0.55 with a, a mean at, at 0.5. Um, we chose that because that seemed like a reasonable upper bound of how much confidence an agent could gain from a single intervention. It didn't make sense that an agent could run a single intervention and suddenly be absolutely certain that that's what that user wanted. A 10% spread still left a fair amount of room for uncertainty, um, especially if it, the agent was choosing between options that had very similar central tendencies. So by doing that, we end up with a distribution of signals across events that uh, do run high. This is a, a random sample of events because we have so many of them. The, the maximum actually does run up to 400. We divide the signal by the max each day in order to get uh, time variance because, for example, on a sale day, 
you're likely to have more signal associated with interventions just because the engineers on the app uh, instrumented more uh, events in order to capture information about the sale. You don't want that those interventions on sale days to suddenly become more meaningful just because of the infrastructure. So we divide by the max each day. That, that scales everything from some low number up to 1.0 but it's very long tailed. 1.0 is the max. And then the next one is like point, like you have a huge gap. And then you have a ton of them that are like really, really small, like 0 0.0078. So we do a log transformation that pins the minimum for that day to a value of two four hundredths. And then we multiply the entire thing by 400. So the minimum ends up being two, the maximum for the day ends up being 400. But it also, it doesn't just transform the ends and rescale everything in the middle linearly, it actually shifts the entire distribution so you get rid of some of that long tailedness. And all of this is ultimately several heuristic decisions, several arbitrary decisions. And I think that's necessary. When we're talking about the probability of something happen, that's just math. But when we're talking about our confidence in it, we have to incorporate prior beliefs. And this is the way we inform our agents of what our prior beliefs are.